Hi guys, this is Rashid and welcome back. As you may know that one of the well-known issues in robot navigation is odometry or where is the robot location right now. Generally, most of the robot in the market, they are just using wheels odometry. So the microcontrollers is getting the feedback of how many turns from the wheel and estimate the position according to where it starts. Everyone knows that this wheels odometry is drifting over time once your robot is moving more and more. And in the end, this wheel odometry is not reliable anymore. So today I would like to show you one of the coolest state of the art and most stable odometry source that you will need for your ROS2 navigation robot and that is Fast Leo. If you are ready, let's get started. So first of all, I'm not an expert of the LiDAR odometry system. This information was introduced by my company partners, Kai Yan. He is the UAV and the robot developers. So many credits is thanks to him. So Fast Leo is the fast, robust, and versatile LiDAR initial odometry framework. It was built by the researcher from University of Hong Kong in Department of Mechanical Engineering. So with the trends of the solid state LiDAR and built-in IMU, Fast Leo could output odometry data up to 100 Hz and mapping in either indoor or outdoor environments. The SLAM algorithm that they have developed could overcome the problem where the environment is quite structureless or there is no much feature to extract. Or in case of fast motion, noisy or clutter environments, this algorithm could handle for such scenario and provide reliable mapping and odometry data for localization. And you're not gonna believe that this fast Leo is designed for computational efficient and able to run on ARM-based single board computer like Raspberry Pi or Nvidia Jetson. For more detail about the research, I suggest to go check on their paper, Fast Leo, a fast robust LiDAR initial odometry package by tightly coupled iterated Kalman filter and Fast Leo 2 Fast Direct LiDAR Initial Odometry. In order to run Fast Leo, we need to have LiDAR with an IMU. And here we are, this is LiVox Mi360, the solid state LiDAR. The spec of this LiDAR is also quite interesting. It has 360 by 59 FOE, maximum range as 40 meter, minimum range as 0.1 meter, and with a size of in your palm. It's very suitable for small to big drone or mobile robots. And to prove that this package is working good, we are going to use a heavy duty rover, our AT crawler. So when this guy is moving, you could notice the frame is quite vibrating. Then let's see how the fast Leo is providing. To attach the Livebox Mid 360 on the AT crawler, I have designed this 3D printed part which has the mounting holes and it could fit with 30 by 30 millimeter aluminum frames. It's a very simple and handy part where you can place this anywhere on the robot so it's not a permanent attach. You can adjust the position and move it somewhere to optimize the robot performance. Then I just go to PCB way and upload my CAD data up to the website and select some of the options like material or color. Or if you have any required options like make a thread or put some insert nut, you can just go ahead. If everything is good, then just click on submit request and they're going to review your order and then you can proceed to check out. And surprisingly, the part is alive really fast and secure right inside of my mailbox. And here is the part. The dimension is pretty precise, even the whole size is not shrinked down, so you don't even need to enlarge it by yourself later. If you need a high precision 3D printed part with customized design, I highly recommend to check on PCB Way. Next, I just need to assemble this part with the mid-360 by the M3 screws. And then attach this LiDAR on the aluminum frame of the AT crawler. And here is my setup with the LiVox mid-360 on the A3 crawler. The LiDAR is placed on front and has offset from center, but we can fix that odometry data by the software. Inside of this controller box, we have the AT motor driver. If you don't know what is this board, I would recommend you to check on my past video about how we can use this board. I'm using this little Nook computer which has Intel Outer Lake and 100 CPU 4 cores and 12GB of memory. 
And on top here is the GL iNet Wi-Fi router, so we can debug and remotely execute the script. This aluminum case here is a DC-DC converter to convert 18 volt power from Makita battery to 5 volt and 12 volt for computer and router. Once we have installed Ubuntu OS on Nook computer, we need to install other necessary packages. I'm using Ubuntu 2004, so I can install ROS1 Noetic and ROS2 Galactic from APT Debian packages. Then to control AT crawler in ROS2, we need to install MD100A ROS2 utils and ROS1 bridge packages under dev workspace, which is ROS2 Galactic. Luckily, on FastLeo repository, it supports ROS2, but you will need to install it under Foxy or Humble, but Humble is recommended. And to use LiveWalk Mid360, we need LiveWalk ROS Driver 2 package, and similarly, we need to install it under Foxy or Humble. I will need to build ROS2 Humble from source separately in order to run FastLeo and LiveWalk ROS Driver. Then the ROS2 Humble core is built inside this workspace core ROS2 Humble. And for easy to manage package and not mess up with ROS2 core, I have created LiveWalk workspace and FastLeo workspace and built each package in each workspace. Once all the packages has been installed, we need to make sure the config file is set up correctly. Inside LiveWalk ROS driver 2 package, config, and mid360 config.json, we need to set up IP of mid360 and IP of host computer. Inside FastLeo package, config, mid360.yum, we need to make sure the map file path is set up to where we want to save PCD file, and for other parameters, everything is okay as default. Now we are ready to check on the odometry and point cloud data. Here I made a shell script called start livebox driver, which is going to source ROS2 environment, then start livebox ROS driver2 node. This launch file is a driver to get data from mid360 and convert it to ROS topic. If it output like this, then it could see LiDAR and now working properly. On the next terminal, there is another shell script as start fast Leo. It's going to source ROS2 environment then start fast Leo, mapping launch. So we need to make sure that the LiveWalk loss driver is running first before this one. Then if it's showing initialize the map KD3, meaning it could see LiveWalk topic and start doing the slam. On my laptop terminal, I'm going to source ROS2 environment and open RVS2. We need to select fixed frame as camera init and choose odometry topic as odometry. So once the robots start moving, you could see the arrow of odometry is moving accordingly. As you can see that, this odometry data from FastLeo is pretty stable and not jumping around or drifting over time, so I believe it could be used for navigation later. Here is the point cloud topic, cloud register. This point cloud data will be accumulated according to the first frame, and it will keep adding up to generate a 3D map. On another terminal, I'm going to source ROS2 environment and then I'm going to save the PCD file by using this ROS2 service command. The fast Leo will say that saving map to the location where we specified. So we can use cloud compare application to open this PCD file and you will see the 3D map that we just generated. So far, I think this odometry is pretty reliable. Then let's use it with Navigation 2 to do some navigation. I have set up MD100A ROS2 util nodes to run in the background. This is the package where you can control AT motor driver via ROS topic. I've made a package called flnav 2 helper. In launch folder, there is pc2.launch.py, which is going to convert point cloud data to laser scan. The input is cloud register body topic, and output is LiDAR scan topic. And there is a relay.topics.launch.py, which is going to start static transform publisher and also running relay topics node. Then I'm going to run this to launch file in each terminal.
And finally, we start the slam toolbox node to start creating 2D map. Now I'm going to move the robot slowly in this room by radio controller in manual mode. If the generated map is satisfied, then we can save the map by the map saver command line node. And here is the map as PTM file. From now, I'm going to start nav to bring up launch file with the map that we just created and with the config file for parameters. First, I'm opening RVS2 on my laptop with the collect nav2 config file. Then I just run this nav2 bring up launch. So you could see the global and local cost map are working. Switch the radio to auto mode, then we could try to send nav to go to let the robot run autonomously. As you can see, the automatic frame is pretty stable, so the AMCL doesn't need to do much work for localization, and also all features from Navigation 2 is running properly. Moreover, if you would like to use point cloud data as a part to detect 3D object, I am highly recommend to go check on this spatial temporal voxel layer from Steve McKinsky, the original developer of Navigation 2. So I have put this layer on local cost map planner, then the robot could see 3D object from point cloud data. And it could give more sense whether the path is possible to go or not. Let's try challenging the fast Leo a bit more. I'm going to make a map of both 2D and 3D around my neighborhood area. The total length might be around 3 to 400 meter. So we could see how stable of the odometry when running outdoor. Here is the result of 2D map from Slam Toolbox. The result is pretty decent. I think because of the geometry source from FastLeo is pretty reliable. So we can use this map for the navigation later. And this is a 3D map from FastLeo. It looks really good without any distortion on features. All the detail of houses, cars, trees are pretty clear. And it could even detect power lines up there. And that's for today's videos. I hope you guys like it. As you can see that even heavy duty robot like the AT crawler, which has no wheels odometry, but when you plug the mid 360 LiDAR and running with the fast Leo, the robot can get reliable odometry and it can do the navigation by running navigation too. If you would like to have the AT crawler or the AT motor driver as your robot platform, please check out on attracklab-shop.com. There is also a documentation where you can easily set up and follow along. If you found my video is useful, there is a super thanks button which you can give some tips for me that would be a good energy to make more new videos. And there is a join button where you can start be a member of my channel. Then we could have more connection and more of discussion on your robots project. And for Isakaya monthly plan, you can have an access on some of my project GitHub repository in the future. If you like this kind of video, don't forget to press like and share button. Thank you for watching and see you soon.